So I was living in Trinidad last year. And when I came back to the UK, people were asking me about Bob Marley and reggae and jerk chicken. And that's when it dawned on me that a lot of people who aren't from the Caribbean think that all Caribbean countries are the same. And whilst there are many things that make them quite similar, they are completely unique and vibrant in so many different ways. Now, this isn't a video saying one country is better than the other or anything like that. I love them both. And I know a lot of people who are from other countries like Guyana or Suriname or Barbados are going to be saying, yeah, we have that as well. And don't worry, I have a lot more videos coming soon. So let's jump right in. Food. Food is life in the Caribbean. And the food in both places is amazing. I grew up eating the foods from both countries, so I'm not going to pick between them. But if you love one more than the other, let me know in the comments below. There's so much fresh food in the Caribbean that uses all amazing local produce and herbs. It's really hard to go back to canned and processed food when you leave. It just doesn't taste the same. There are so many similarities and differences, I don't even know where to start. But let's go with curry. Curry is a big deal in both places, a legacy of the Indian heritage of the islands. Curry goat or goat curry is a favorite throughout the whole Caribbean, just like curry chicken. The most popular meats in the Caribbean are probably pork and chicken. You'll find these two most commonly being cooked on the grill. In Jamaica, you have jerk chicken, and in Trinidad, you have barbecue chicken. They both follow a similar cooking style. However, jerk can be more traditional often, cooked in a pit on pimento wood and seasoned for a longer time with jerk seasoning. Barbecue chicken, often you see it with a repurposed drum, the same how you might see jerk chicken being cooked sometimes. For generations, meat was a luxury to the people of the Caribbean. So many of the meals people enjoy today were the offcuts, sous, a preserved soup and vinegar base, black pudding, a blood sausage, and now maybe most famously, oxtail. Now, you can't eat curry or meat without rice. White rice, rice and peas. Now this isn't always true, but I found in Jamaica that rice and peas was more popular with kidney beans, and in Trinidad they use kungo beans, sometimes known as Congo peas or pigeon peas. Some other incredible rice dishes, especially in Trinidad, include cook-up rice and pilau, which I know lots of Caribbean countries enjoy some form of. One thing in Trinidad which you might not see much in Jamaica is roti. In Trinidad and other places like Guyana and Suriname, roti like sada roti, wasap shot or dal puri might be the most important food in the whole country. In Jamaica, you'll find some versions of roti, but it's a lot less popular. Of course, if you're on a tropical island surrounded by the ocean, you have got to have fresh fish. Fried and steamed fish are both incredible. In Jamaica, you want to head down to the Helsha Beach in Kingston and get some snapper or lobster with fried festivals. Likewise, if you're in Trinidad, you need to head up to Maracas Bay and try the legendary bacon shark. Now, it's a good thing I don't live in Trinidad because let me tell you, I would eat this for lunch and dinner every single day. What they call bakes in Trinidad, are kind of like bigger versions of what Jamaicans simply call fried dumplings or Johnny cakes but some people do call them bake as well. These are like soft fried dough or fried bread, and they're so Moorish. Now fear not, if you are vegan or vegetarian, both countries have more than enough for you. Yam, cassava, sweet potato, breadfruit, dasheen, green banana, and plantain. You can eat these as a side or in meals like rundown and soups. Over in Trinidad, much of the food related to the people of the Hindu religion is meat-free. Foods like bhaji, which uses dasheen bush leaf, it's kind of like a spinach. Then you have body or bora, which are green beans, and pumpkin takari, a steamed down pumpkin mash. They also have amazing Creole foods like palaloo, a rich stew made from dashing bush, okra, and pumpkin. But this isn't like what Jamaica knows as kalaloo, which is more of a simple saute dish using the same leaves. Now, all of these greens too are used for green seasoning in Trinidad, which is used to cook and season nearly every meal. I don't know anyone from Trinidad or Guyana that doesn't use green seasoning, but it is less commonly used in Jamaica, which reminds me, what do you call this thing? Shadow Benny, Shandon Benny, Bandania, Gulantra. I never heard of it in Jamaica, but in Guyana and Trinidad, you can find it at every single market. Now, one thing I didn't see at all in Trinidad, even though people told me did exist, was Aki. This fruit is quite hard to describe if you've never had it before. It's fatally poisonous before it's fully ripe. But once it is ripe, it makes amazing stews by itself, though it is usually paired with saltfish to make the national dish Aki and saltfish. Oh, and everything is hot, real hot, thanks to the use of local chilies. In Jamaica, you have Scotch bonnet peppers, which are the most popular. And in Trinidad, you have bird peppers, 
and even smaller ones like pimento. And for those who can handle the heat, you have the incredibly hot scorpion peppers, which trust me are absolutely no joke. Now let's get to the fruits. Because if you're anywhere in the Caribbean, you should be eating fresh fruits at least once a day. Now mangoes, there are so many different types of mangoes. It's incredible. In Trinidad, the main mango I saw was green mango, which is often used to cook things like masala mango or make condiments like mango sour and cuchilla. Some of my other favorite fruits include guava, pawpaw, or papaya, tapadilla, or what some people call naysbury, soursop, which has many different names. You have chocho or chayote. You have jackfruit, which some people call kawa. You have the Ethiopian apple or the Jamaican apple, which some people call pomerac. Then you have ginip, which some people call chinette. And then you have custard apples, sometimes known as cherry moya. Now there's so much street food and local bakeries in both countries, so I'll just focus on my main favorites. In Jamaica, in any town, anywhere, you'll find patties. These are amazing flaky pastries, maybe loosely based on British Cornish pasties. You can get these in many flavors like chicken, fish, beef, veggie, and probably my guilty pleasure, which is cheesy beef. In Trinidad, these style of patties are harder to come by, but other things you're gonna find much, much easier are things like doubles, pilori, and aloo pie. Likely because these are Indian heritage foods, and since Trinidad has a much higher percent of Indian population, that's probably the reason why. These foods, especially doubles, you'll find on every high street, every corner, every highway. Doubles, also known as bara and chana, chana being curry chickpeas and bara simply fried dough. The chana is poured over the bara, and then you can have any topping that you want on top of it. Aloo pie is a similar fried dough with stuffed spicy potato, and I always usually get a bag of pilori when I get aloo pie at the same time. Sorry to interrupt, this is a quick ad break sponsored by me. That's me. If you're a fan of all this food, history, tales from the Caribbean, and you want to support the channel, then check out my new book. Link below. All right, back to the video. My father is Trinidad and my whole family is Trinidadian, right? The only thing... I'm still too expensive. I'm still dear. Mm -mm. Mr. my God, meat store. I'm going to look here. I forgot to put it on my head. Now, to understand this diverse food and culture, we need to understand what or who makes up the Caribbean. Trinidad and Jamaica are both very diverse. Trinidad's national motto is, together we aspire, together we achieve. And Jamaica's is, out of many, we are one. Now, not to gloss over centuries of history, but in its simplest form, most of the Caribbean nations were inhabited by Amerindian tribes who moved around the Americans. Around the 1400s, when Spanish colonizers and settlers in search of riches arrived, they wiped out these indigenous tribes through war, genocide, and disease. Soon after these, more European forces, including the Portuguese, the French, the Dutch, and the British, wanted to take advantage of the crops like sugar, cocoa, and cotton. They turned to West Africa for exploitative labor, and as such, the transatlantic slave trade was born in the 1600s. This lasted all the way until around the 1900s when the slave trade was abolished. Many European plantation owners were not happy about this and still wanted and needed labor to exploit, so they turned to the other countries they had colonized. For the British who controlled Jamaica and Trinidad, this was overwhelmingly indentured laborers from India and also from China who filled in. But after generations of riots about the poor working conditions, it was disbanded. In the wake of this, both countries eventually gained independence, and the people you see today in the Caribbean are a result of all of this. A key difference being that much more Indian people ended up in Trinidad and Guyana and Suriname compared to Jamaica, and is very clearly seen in the food and the culture and the music, and also things like religion. For the main religions in both countries are influenced by the different people who came. With Trinidad having a higher number of Indian descendants, the presence of Hinduism is seen across the nation, with many beautiful Mandir temples across the country and unmissable events in the year like Holi, the Festival of Colors, and Diwali. Given that both nations are overwhelmingly Christian, arguably a legacy of the Europeans in the region. In fact, some sources say that Jamaica has the most churches per capita in the entire world. That being said, you'll also find many beautiful mosques and Jewish synagogues, which many people I don't think are aware exist in the Caribbean. Also, you have the Rastafari culture, which exists in small parts in Trinidad, but mainly in Jamaica where it originated and is comparably more popular there. In Jamaica, there are communes all over the island, which you can see in some of my older videos. These all hold many ceremonies across the year that people outside the community are welcome to enjoy and see for themselves. And I highly recommend this if possible. By now, you can't have missed the stunning scenery of the Caribbean. 
all of the Caribbean to me is beautiful, both town and country. Each corner, each hilltop and valley is special and it will take hundreds of years to fully explore one island, let alone the whole entire region. As Jamaica is mainly driven by tourism, it has an abundance of spots. Just in St. Anne's Parish alone, you have Duns River, Little Duns River, Blue Hole and White River. Trinidad itself doesn't have much tourism in the same way Jamaica does, but Tobago, its sister island, has it in abundance. Here too, you have natural beauty like Castaro waterfalls, in addition to endless breathtaking views and gleaming beaches. That's not to say that Trinidad doesn't have its own natural beauty, which we'll talk about in a second. In Port Antonio, probably my favorite part of Jamaica, you have Blue Lagoon, a small hidden spot where the water is so blue and clean, you could literally read right through it. Now, like I said, in Trinidad, there are tons of hidden off the beaten track wonders, like the small town of Maruga to the south of the island that has some great local vibes and relaxing beaches. Then you have the Chagaramas boardwalk to the northwest of the island, South of Port of Spain, you have some more famous tourist attractions like the Coroni Swamp Bird Sanctuary, where you can see the most stunning array of birds and wildlife while riding through on a boat. In Jamaica, you have the Blue Mountains, where you have the most amazing views over the hills in Kingston. In Trinidad, you have the Northern Range, where once you cross over, you end up on the North Coast. Here you'll find the lush green of Paramin, known for its green seasoning, and Trinidad's famous Maracas Beach, a long stretch of beautiful beach lined with Goliath tropical trees. Given this said, I actually prefer Las Cuevas a tiny bit, which is just a short drive on. The sounds of nature in the Caribbean are incredible, but there's no scenery in the Caribbean without music. Music is everywhere. I said food is life, but so is music. In the shops, in supermarkets, in taxis, petrol stations, and of course on the street. Music's everywhere. People are known to enjoy loud music all hours of the day and night. The history of music in the Caribbean is deep enough for another video. A lot of modern music in Trinidad and Jamaica has its roots in African rhythms brought over by the enslaved people. In the early 1900s, Mento, which was popular in Jamaica, and Calypso music in Trinidad. Early pioneers in Trinidad, like Attila the Hun and Tiger, were followed by the likes of Kitchener, Sparrow and Calypso Rose. Also during this time, the Indian indentured workers who were brought to Trinidad and Jamaica had a significant influence on the music of these islands. They brought with them traditional Indian music, like the emotive devotional songs known as bhajans, as well as folk music like chutney. In the 1970s, Trinidad saw the rise of soca music, a fusion of all of Trinidad's cultures. It was faster and more upbeat and quickly became a staple of Trinidad's carnival. To this day, soca music continues to evolve. Now, in Jamaica, early forms of music like mento evolved into ska, and in the 1970s, this saw the rise of reggae music and its most iconic figure, Bob Marley. While he blazed the path for the music around the world, there's still so many other legendary people who also contributed to the development of the sound. In the 1980s, forms of reggae music evolved into dancehall, which today continues to be one of the most popular types of sound in Jamaica and across the whole region. All this being said, the music blends across the region and you're very likely to hear bashment and reggae music in Trinidad as you are to hear sounds of calypso and soca often in Jamaica. Now, while you're likely to hear all these types of sounds at a bashment, a lime, a fet or a rave, these are all fun, but absolutely nothing beats carnival. This is where the music of the Caribbean comes alive. In the Caribbean, the idea of carnival, which closely mirrors what we know today, began as a celebration amongst the enslaved Africans. While the European settlers held their own balls and celebrations, from which the Africans were excluded, these people created their own means of celebration, which included various cultural rituals, music and dances. Many historians depict that Africans were drawn to the Islamic festivals of Hosea and Taja, as well as Hindu events like Holi, which all blend together to make the carnival we see today. Now, Jamaica has always had small carnivals and traditions like John Canoe, and since the 1950s, it has an emerging road carnival that was created by people looking to recreate the Trini spirit. But except it's something like Rio Carnival in Brazil, I don't know if anything can match carnival in Trinidad and Tobago. The freedom, the spirit, the happiness, the unity, all the events, it's all unmatched. Some people prefer to have their favorite days, like carnival on Monday and Tuesdays. Some people like to wake up super early in the morning for juve, and other people like to stay up late into the night for the big concerts. And many are people I know do both every single day, on and on. There's so much going on, it's basically a rave for the whole entire month. And I think this is something that everyone should enjoy at minimum once in their lives. Now, for all its beauty, I know that things in the Caribbean are perfect. Tobago has recorded its eighth move. In a state of public emergency. 1003. And the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service suffer. And there are many deeper issues that I unfortunately don't have time to go into this video, but I plan to in future ones. 
hope you enjoyed this video. It was just a bit of fun and of course it doesn't cover everything. I was vlogging before and I took some time off to concentrate on my books and to think about what I really wanted to do and that was to start making videos about issues that affect my community and my family and the wider world. Vlogging was fun but everywhere I travelled, that was Africa or Europe or even Asia, I saw things that really affected me as stories that I wanted to tell, issues that I wanted to cover more. If there are any topics that you're interested in feel free to let me know in the comments below.